It's Good Friday, and we're completing our series of studies on God's amazing love for us. Since January, we've been following our Lord through his trial and crucifixion, and it's fitting that on this day of all days in the year, we come again to Calvary to reflect on the final words that our Lord Jesus spoke from the cross. In Luke's Gospel, chapter 23 and verse 46, we read this. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. Remarkably, after several hours on the cross, Jesus cries out with a loud voice. This is striking because crucifixion was death by gradual asphyxiation. As the victim approached the end, he could scarcely breathe, much less shout. So Luke, who was himself a doctor, highlights this unusual feature of Jesus' death. His point is that it was Jesus who decided the moment of his death, not the Roman executioners, nor natural process. It wasn't that just Jesus was just now so exhausted he had no choice but to die at this moment. Rather, he chose to give up his spirit now. But why now? It was because he knew his work on the cross was done. He didn't need to stay there a moment longer. In the previous verses, verses 44 and 45, Luke points us to what Jesus had achieved by drawing our attention to two things. First, that there was darkness at midday. Three hours of darkness as Jesus passed under God's judgment on our sins. And secondly, that the temple curtain had now been torn in two. By removing our sins, Jesus' death opened the way for us to come home to God. Now that was his mission on earth. That was why he had come. And his work was now done. He had accomplished all that his father had asked him to do. Jesus, whose very name means Saviour, has paid the price of our sins. It is finished. And so, with the work on the cross completed, Jesus surrendered his spirit into the hands of his heavenly Father. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. I wonder how you see death. These final words of Jesus reveal his view of death. He was giving himself into God's safekeeping. Earlier, as Jesus had passed under God's judgment on our sins, he cried out in anguish, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Now, as Jesus commits his spirit to God, we see him once again enjoying unbroken communion with his father. It was not that his father had ever ceased to love him. This is something really important for us to understand. Whatever was involved in the agony which God the Father and God the Son shared at Calvary, it did not mean that the father had ceased to love his son. No, their grief was precisely that they loved each other so much. Do not ever think of the father hating his son on the cross. On the contrary, he had never loved him more. I wonder if you've ever noticed a remarkable thing that Jesus says in John chapter 10, verse 17. These are his words. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life. Isn't that amazing? The reason that my father loves me is that I lay down my life. Now we need to be careful not to misunderstand this. This does not mean that the father withholds his love until Jesus agrees to die on the cross. I will not love you unless you do this thing. No, that's not what's being said at all. Rather, the cross reveals the Son's true nature. We're forever being told these days, be yourself. 
Well, if I can say it reverently, when the Son of God is hanging on the cross, he is truly being himself. This is who he really is. He's the one whose heart overflows with love for his Father's honor and glory, and whose heart overflows with love for us as lost, broken sinners. He will give everything he has to glorify God and to redeem us. Now it is such a son as this that calls forth the Father's deepest love. He is indeed the perfect image of his Father, the God who gives everything. It's striking that on the three occasions recorded for us in the Gospels, when the Father speaks from heaven, what moves him to speak on each occasion is his son's willingness to sacrifice himself to save us. First, there was the occasion at Jesus' baptism, when our Lord Jesus was taking the mission of salvation on himself, identifying himself with sinners. At that point, his father is moved to speak from heaven and to say, you are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. And the second occasion was at Jesus' transfiguration, when Jesus spoke with Moses and Elijah about his forthcoming sacrifice, his death on the cross. And again, at that moment, the father's heart bursting with love for this son who will give himself so freely for the salvation of others. The father speaks from heaven, this is my son whom I love. Listen to him. And the third occasion was just before Jesus was arrested, when Jesus was speaking of his death, and he prayed, Father, glorify your name. Again, the father's heart bursts with love for his son, and a voice comes from heaven and says, I have glorified my name, and I will glorify it again. There's an old hymn which begins with the words, my Jesus, I love thee, I know thou art mine. And each verse ends with the words, If ever I loved thee, my Jesus, tis now. And although we can never fully understand what happened in those hours of darkness at Calvary, it must be true that even when our Lord Jesus passed under God's judgment, his father was singing over him in heaven, if ever I love thee, my Jesus, tis now. On the cross, our Lord Jesus Christ did what no Old Testament sacrifice ever did. He willingly died in the place of others. He is the son who truly reflects his father's heart. And so his father bursts with love for him. This is my son. His father loves him. And safe in that knowledge, Jesus dies confidently in fellowship with his father and under his father's protection. And here's what follows from this. Because of what Jesus has achieved, we too can call God our Father. At all times, and even in the hardest places, we can rest in God's hands, because Jesus has won that privilege for us. Today, many of us are understandably frightened by the coronavirus. At bottom, it's a fear of death, which sooner or later we must all face, whether through this virus or through some other cause. We are seeing that our Western secular culture offers neither comfort nor hope in the face of death. But that makes the gospel of Jesus Christ shine all the more brightly. Because of Jesus, we too can die as he did, confidently, with the assurance that we are going to the Father's house. We can die and we can live, in the safest place in all the universe, in the hands of God. Here is the heart's 
true refuge in every time of trouble. The knowledge of God's everlasting love, the knowledge that his heart and his home are open for us. Jesus achieved all this for us through his death on the cross. What a wonderful thing it is to be able to die with confidence and assurance, able to say, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Let me close with this. When Jesus died in this way, the centurion in charge of the execution party was given plenty to think about. Mark tells us in his gospel that that centurion declared that Jesus was the Son of God. Matthew adds that all the others in the execution party joined him in saying the same thing. Luke tells us, simply but powerfully, that the centurion praised God. Don't you think we should do the same? May we all be able to say, the Son of God loved me and gave himself for me. And now my life and times are in the hands of my heavenly Father. And all because of Jesus. What a wonderful Savior. What amazing love. Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we praise you for your redeeming love. As we bow before the cross, we gratefully acknowledge the debt we owe. For ours was the sin you bore, ours the ransom you paid, ours the salvation you won. Lord Jesus, accept our thanksgiving and make us your true disciples for your love's sake. And now, our Father in heaven, we entrust ourselves to you, that living or dying, we may ever be with our Lord Jesus, safe in your eternal care. May your blessing rest on us this day and always. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you, brothers and sisters.